Speaking of spinning it, someone who did not spin it today was Cleta Mitchell. Cleta Mitchell is the is an American lawyer and activist, and she spoke before Congress. She's an attorney for the Tea Party, and here's what she said today about President Obama's statement of just a few bonehead decisions and not a scandal dealing with the IRS. Roll it. First, the IRS scandal is real. It's not pretend, it's real. Number two, the IRS scandal is not just a boneheaded bunch of bureaucrats in some remote office, contrary to what the President of the United States told the American people on Sunday. And number three, the IRS scandal is not over. It is continuing to this day, and the Department of Justice investigation is a sham. It is a non-existent investigation. With regard to point number one, let me tell you in one sentence what the IRS scandal is. The IRS, at the direction of some political elites in Washington, not in Cincinnati, but Washington, took what had been for decades a process of reviewing applications for exempt status that for a 501c4 organization could be expected to take three to four weeks. And they converted that process into one that took three to four years and in some cases is still not over. That was pretty much right on it, wasn't it? Thank you. Hat tip to Gateway Pundit, among others. I actually saw this morning on Fox when they did it live. It was very interesting. That said, just to give you an idea, they're the excuses that they have used, like the rules were too confusing when it came to the IRS scandal of the treatment of Tea Party groups and conservative groups and conservative Christian groups and pro-Israel groups, sometimes one of the same, it's not holding up. Dave Camp yesterday spoke to this, and Congressman Camp pressed the commissioner, new commissioner of the IRS, John Koskin, about the rules and about how the rule changes and how media attention was the reason for the extra scrutiny coming from D.C., not coming from the local Cincinnati office. Here's part of their exchange where he gives the commissioner a little advice. Roll it. Then I would certainly urge you to go back and look at the facts, to read that email, because in addition to flagging it because of media attention, the Cincinnati worker correctly quoted the IRS's procedures regarding the processing of these kinds of cases. He was clearly not confused. He knew exactly what he was doing. And it was Washington, D.C. that told him to hold and sit on these cases. So I understand that when new subjects pop up, sometimes people are unsure how to react to them. But again, that isn't the case here. And the rules for 501c4 organizations are well established. Do you know how long the rules have been in place for these organizations? <clears throat> the statute was passed some time ago. In 1959, the Eisenhower administration made the determination that the wording exclusive in the statute, which could be interpreted in a lot of different ways, including no activity, should be interpreted that exclusively engaged in social welfare activity should mean primarily. <clears throat> and since 1959, that has been, <clears throat> excuse me, the standard, as I understand yeah, it. So these, you know, it, these have been in place for more than a half a century. So the IRS and its employees have been dealing with these groups for a very long time, and I think it seems like a stretch to claim the agency was confused after this long. And uh, I frankly give uh, the employees of the IRS more credit than that. No. Yeah. Again, they tried to point it to the rules being confusing. February 2010, the behavior changed, and the behavior changed because of media attention, not because of the rules or not being able to understand the rules. Once again, we're exposing the fertilizer that the administration has consistently put out or the defenses of it. Lois Lerner, why did you plead the fifth? Help me, help you, help us understand that. Not a smidgen, not a smidgen. Email has surfaced between the IRS and Lois Lerner. It proves, and this is coming to us, it proves that the Treasury Department secretly 
drafted rules targeting conservatives. And they have an email that proves this. Congressman Camp refers to this email. And what he really is saying, it, by the way, this would be on every major network interrupting all the news if this were a Republican conservative president and this had happened. Mark my words, it would have. The media treating it the way it is, it's unfortunate. It's actually, some people say government acting like this is frightening. Yes, it is. It's even more frightening that we don't have wall-to-wall -wall coverage of these hearings because we have a, a president that the mainstream media loves to protect who in essence says, ah, it's, it's a phony scandal. You just call it a phony scandal. It becomes a phony scandal. Amazing. He, he, he has such powers of persuasion. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. I Be wary of things ascribed to far-left politicians who are being called uh, the likes of Bill Clinton, no Teflon president, nothing sticks to him because you all are hosing him off regularly. And it's sad. That said, I think things are going to stick. Take a look, good look at this where D Congressman Dave Camp says, hey, look, this email points to the fact that it wasn't the confusion about the rules, it wasn't any of that. It was about targeting these groups. Roll it. It's a fact that Cincinnati was approving Tea Party cases before getting orders from Washington, D.C. to hold them. And they were processing them without delay and without intrusive questions. Now, through our investigation, we've identified examples of applications coming in, subjected to review and approved from conservative and Tea Party groups that were approved within three months. And it was only after Cincinnati highlighted this high-profile media attention that Washington, D.C. got involved. And it was only then that these groups were subjected to what I would call inexcusable delay and harassment. And it seems there's a pretty clear fact pattern that's developing here. And it wasn't confusion. It was Washington, D.C. that caused conservative groups to be targeted and harassed. And so understanding that, we go to part two. He continued. Roll it. Now, the attempt to mischaracterize the targeting is being driven, as being driven by confusion or, as the president said, boneheaded decisions out of a local office, and that's a quote from the commander-in-chief, is bad enough. What's worse is the administration's attempt to mislead the American public about the reason for the proposed regulations. And the truth is that our investigation has revealed that the regulations weren't drafted as a remedy to targeting. In fact, they were being worked on in 2011 during the time of the targeting as another line of attack against these groups. Now, Commissioner Koskin and the committee has found IRS emails from 2012 in which the IRS and Treasury discussed working on 50C regulations, quote, off plan. Do you know what off plan means? I uh, do not know what the, that would have meant in 2012. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure that means hidden from the public. And would you agree that if Treasury and the IRS had fabricated the rationale for a rule change, uh, it would tend to raise questions about the integrity of the rulemaking process? I look forward to working with the committee. I want you to get the documents you need. I look forward to discussing you, with you the report when it's finalized. And I look forward to re uh, reviewing uh, with the Treasury Department uh, all of the comments about the regulatory process. At this point, I did not participate in it. I do not know the background of how the regulations were drafted, but I can guarantee you uh, that I will look uh, independently and uh, in a balanced way at what uh, will be, to, uh, to the extent I have any control over it, uh, at what the appropriate uh, uh, draft regulations and final regulations should be. This thing is huge. It's blowing up. And the fact is, the only way this gets to be followed up on is not through our wonderful mainstream media. So we have CNS News, Newsbusters, we have the likes of OneNewsNow.com and American Family News, one and the same. You do have outlets like that, as well as Nothing But Truth, bringing you those, the Gateway Pundit. Bottom line, we're not going to let it go because the truth needs to be told. And it's still going on. That's frightening.
Aaron Free next. Brain Durham, something but truth, AFR Talk.